All over the internet, people have been coming out with videos about Cody Ko and how he allegedly has been with Tana Mojo when she was 17. Oh my god, do no one look at me, Cody Ko. And the reason why I'm covering this is because this is a popular topic in today's culture and I want to give a biblical perspective. So make sure to watch till the end because I think there's some Bible verses that can help with this entire situation and even you guys can learn from it all. Let's get right into the video. Someone has been alleging for years now that you, one of the largest commentary creators on YouTube, knowingly committed a crime against her when she was a minor. But YouTubers and viewers alike are ignoring and discrediting these allegations solely because the person making them happen to be an unlikable woman online, Tana Mojo. And you know that people are ignoring this because nobody is working harder to bury this story than you. And you're getting away with it because commentary YouTube has a serious problem. I can't blame any of your viewers or my viewers for not hearing about this because you've done such a good job hiding it up until now that I only found out about it recently. The situation has been talked about by smaller channels, it's been discussed at length on other platforms, and it keeps almost hitting the mainstream, like with this Rolling Stone article or this H3 podcast discussion. But the reason it hasn't caught on yet, despite all of this, is that none of your friends, nobody on your level, Nobody in the commentary niche with enough pull is willing to admit that this situation makes you look terrible. A lot of people like him a lot and they really are like doing any kind of mental yeah. gymnastic to just ignore it. I'm not here to accuse you of committing a crime in this video because I can't do that based on someone else's allegations. Nobody can definitively take these allegations as proof, but at the same time, they should still be looked at and not treated as an open secret and swept under the rug like you've been doing for so many years now. And from the way the situation keeps popping up more and more often, it's clear that there's only so much rug sweeping you can do before people start taking a closer look at things. So let's take a closer look. We both know that Tana Mojo is a YouTube personality with a history of lies, controversy, and genuinely problematic behavior that's become so entangled with her brand that her podcast is called Cancelled with Tana Mojo. And speaking of this podcast, about a month ago she hosted a live episode in front of an audience, and the conversation turned to you. Who's the smallest you've ever had sex with? Oh my god, do no one look at me, Cody Ko. I can say that, I was literally 17. Literally 17, and that the, the crazy thing is, is that Cody Ko was 25, and anytime you do something with a minor, you're in trouble. It's illegal. It's against the law. And from a Christian perspective, just from a Christian perspective, it's a sin to have sex with anyone outside of marriage. Therefore, he would be in trouble. But if he was following God's law, this would have never happened. But anyway, let's continue to watch. Rounds and people were understandably perturbed because if Tana Mojo was 17, you would have been 25. So people started speculating and Tana decided to set the record straight. I hooked up with Cody Cole when I was 17 and he was 25. She claims that not only were you fully aware of her age at the time, but someone even tried to stop you and you went ahead anyway. There was a situation with Gabby Hanna at a playlist live where she pulled him aside and told him like, yo, she's 17. And then we still went and hooked up. To be clear, 17 17 is under the age of consent in many states, including Florida, where Playlist Live used to take place. So this means that Tana Mojo is accusing you of statutory rape, and she's not trying to hide that. This isn't just some crazy tea. It was a crime. Nothing would make this situation better, but plenty of things make it worse, like the fact that she was a fan of yours at the time, adding an additional layer to the power dynamic you would have had over her. I grew up loving him, and I think I, you know what I mean? Like, I yeah. was just, like, excited and a fan. Tana seems to have many feelings about this, which we'll go over a bit. I think this is also something that a lot of us can learn from, is that like, when you have any power, when you have any influence, it can be so easy to abuse it. It can be so easy to abuse the power that God has given you. Like what we hear about so many, maybe not so many pastors, but a lot of pastor things coming out that pastors abuse their power because the people are in a vulnerable situation where it can be so easy to take advantage of. And that's why it's so important to take care of your heart, take care of what's most important and put up boundaries and, and, and guardrails to 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 keep you away from doing these things that are against God's will.
later, but she stated very clearly that the actions she's accusing you of are inexcusable. If I had a 17 year old daughter mm. or a little sister or something, like I would kill. I would never let it fly. These recent allegations are bad enough on their own, but there are a couple of things that make them worse still. Things that many people don't know yet, but you do. You know that Tana has been making the same specific claim against you for years now. Here she is back in 2021 saying the same thing. I was 17 at the time, 18. I started kind of hooking up with other people. Shout out JC Kalen, shout out Cody Co. But what lends the most credibility to Tana's claims, and what is really the most damning thing for you, Cody, is a clip that you might not have even seen yet. See, I read the Rolling Stone article, I watched the YouTube videos about this, and they all missed something. And I understand why. The clip I'm about to show you is extremely hard to find. The original has been lost to time, and it's a wonder we have this on video at all. But if there was anything to give me any more clarity about these allegations before I formed my opinion, I was going to find it. Remember how Tana said that fellow YouTuber Gabby Hanna tried to stop you before everything allegedly went down? Well, did you know that Gabby is actually on record telling the exact same story several years ago? One time, I told a guy, I saw him making out with a girl at a party yeah. who was underage, and I pulled him aside and I was like, hey man, you probably don't know, I know she like looks a little older, she's underage, watch it. And he's like, oh my god, thank you for telling me. And then he turned that- This is really- really bad. The Bible talks about how the Holy Spirit always gives us a way out. We don't have to fall into temptation. We don't have to give in. There's always a way out. And I know it could be hard. I know it could be tempting to, to follow the, our fleshly desires. And I know in some different types of way, we all have fallen into our fleshly desires, some worse than others, but there's still going to be consequences for those sins. Some are greater than others, and Cody Ko is going to be dealing with a lot more other consequences. People make accusations all the time, specifically regarding things that are very difficult to prove or disprove, unfortunate as that may be. But when somebody makes an allegation and they say they have a witness, and that witness can be found telling the exact same story years before any of this came out, that's not something I can just ignore. In a situation that cannot be proven, corroboration by a third party goes a long way. And frankly, Cody, the allegations against you seem to have been corroborated. But instead of researching to find these answers like I did, many of your fans seem far more interested in attacking your accuser. I have seen so many comments, but what was she wearing? It's Tana, so who cares? Well, it's Tana Mojo. The reaction to this has been unsurprising, but incredibly disappointing. Demanding proof that they know she can't provide, acting like she's only doing this to gain clout or ruin you somehow, despite the fact that she's never once put your name in a video title over this. Or worst of all, implying that a 17 year old could have truly consented to any of this. But let's be clear about one thing. That is not the case. No amount of retroactive age calculations or what if scenarios change the fact that what Tana described would be, objectively speaking, a crime. A crime which you've said absolutely nothing about. And even if this wasn't illegal, you remember being 25. You would have known then, as I currently know at age 25, that nobody this age should need an explanation for why a 17 year old is off limits. Because you remember being 17 too. Now, thankfully, Tana's personal experience with this isn't one of trauma. In fact, I've seen people defending you by saying, Tana said she doesn't care, so why should any of us care? But that's not exactly what she was saying. I don't don't associate or hold it with trauma because I am such a comparative person where I'm like so many worse things have happened to me. And even if something isn't conscious. Wow. So Tana is saying like so many worse things happened to her. Therefore, it shouldn't even matter. It doesn't even doesn't even bother her, which is kind of sad. And, and I only pray that Tana will really just go to Jesus and be healed these pains and, and maybe some, so many times that she's been taken advantage of for her body or for for who she is or whatever else. I pray that God will just heal her. The internalized as an identifiable source of trauma, the body keeps the score. I know things manifest in ways other than me directly feeling them. Like maybe I don't yeah. feel traumatized in certain aspects from certain things and other things I do, but you know, maybe they just manifest in ways other than directly feeling. The answer to why any of us should care is that a person has tried to come forward about her experience and has been met with the most vitriolic victim blaming I've seen in years. She's been dismissed, discredited, and disbelieved before anybody ever gave her a chance 
because it's Tana, which sets a horrible precedent that if a person runs out of goodwill, they lose the right to come forward with their experiences. The most traumatizing thing of all of this really was seeing how many people like don't believe people or don't yeah. believe me. I feel so bad for all of these young girls because then they see that and then it makes them not want to come forward. And you, Cody, are part of the reason she's been met with this reaction. Your status as one of YouTube's golden boys has made it possible for you to ignore a situation that almost anyone else would have had to respond to by now. I know for a fact if you swapped out Cody Ko with someone that like people didn't like that much. Oh my I God. would be receiving so much more sympathy. I find your silence on the situation to be uncomfortable because I know that if Tana's allegations are true, then silence would be your only option, since telling the truth would be tantamount to confessing to a crime and lying would put you at risk of being contradicted by a witness. And like I told you at the beginning, I'm not accusing you of committing a crime, but even if what Tana says is false, your silence is still grossly incompetent at best. Why are you choosing the path that would be your only option if you were guilty? Now, some seem to think that you're not obligated to speak up, and maybe that's what people around you are telling you as well. But from one creator to another, you absolutely have an obligation to, at the very least, call out the misogyny, the victim blaming, and all manner of cognitive dissonance that's coming from your audience in the name of defending you against allegations that you're too cowardly to address. And to be clear, this is cowardice, because you demonstrate it whenever there's controversy afoot. Tana's further claims make it sound like you're terrified. I said something about it online and it was starting to surface. And he texted me like, are we good? And was like, and like, mm. I said, yeah. And like, he was like, my wedding's coming up. You do have a history of making bad choices when you're terrified of people finding things out. Like your history of using slurs. Five, nigga, six, nigga, seven, nigga, eight, nigga, nine, nigga, there's more clips than that, but the reason most people are blissfully unaware of them is because you posted your vague apology not on Twitter, not on YouTube, but on Patreon, despite acknowledging in your apology that the clips were surfacing on Twitter. This is one of many examples of your poor handling of controversy. Okay, so here are my thoughts. Anytime you follow your fleshly desires, it's only going to leave you down a, a terrible path. It's only going to leave you with more consequences that you're going to have to face in the future. And it's just going to leave you unsatisfied in the first place. And second is doing things outside of God's will will just lead you to destruction. That's what I'll say. And now I have some Bible verses that I think will tie everything together and it will warn all of you to stay away from any type of these situations. So let's get right into it. First Corinthians 6.15 says, run from sexual sin, no other sin is so clearly affects the body as the one does. For sexual immorality is a sin against your own body. The Bible says to run from sexual sin. And as you can see, even Cody Ko was warned about this. And he obviously didn't run away from it. And therefore, he's facing the consequences of what the Bible says. I'm not saying that he's actually... Did these stuff but this is just like a lesson for you all to run from sexual sin you might you might be thinking oh the world says it's fine it's your body your choice you get to do whatever you want this is a sexual liberation time and culture so we can just have sex with whoever and there's no consequences that's just a lie from the devil and be sure that your sins will be found out. And here's a verse that talks about that. Numbers 32, 23 says, But if you fail to keep your word, then you will have sinned against the Lord, and you may be sure that your sin will find you out. So guys, be sure that your sin will be found out. Whatever, how big, how small. So it's important to confess your sin. Proverbs 28, 13 says, People who conceal their sin will not prosper. But if they confess and turn from them, they will receive mercy. And this is my challenge to you all, to repent of your sins, to turn to God and ask God to forgive you. You know what's amazing? The Bible says if you confess your sins, God is faithful and just to forgive them. You can turn away from your sins and ask God to forgive you and own up to the things that you've done. And Jesus will forgive you through the price that he paid by dying on the cross for your sins. Guess what? We've all sinned. We've all fallen short. We need a savior. So that's why we need to go to God. That's why we need to go to Jesus. Not just Cody Code, not just Tana Mojo. All of us, we need to go to God 
So I encourage you all to go to God and confess your sins and repent and turn away and live for Jesus. He has an amazing plan for your life, so I encourage you to go to Him and follow the calling that He has for you. So anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. I want to know your comments and your thoughts on this. Um, I know it's a little bit different, but I think it's important to talk about things that are happening in the culture and on YouTube. So please like this video and also subscribe if you haven't. Also, you might like this video here. Peace.